Um, I too want to welcome you all to uh, Clemson for this uh, wonderful event. <clears throat> I have to tell you, this has, been, this has been an idea that's been around for a while. I know that the University of Missouri had considered a national conference um, first. Uh, we went to D.C. and talked to folks there about it um, a while back, and they were excited. Whenever we said, if the students want to do this, people, their eyes lit up. They said, this is special. Students, if faculty want to show up and say, well, we want to have a meeting, no one cares, right? But if the, if the students show up and say, we would like to do this, it's amazing how many doors that opens and how excited people are. And I think the sign of that is the, the number of people who are willing to come on their own time to be here at, with us at this meeting. Um, <clears throat> it's a hard thing to do. It's not something that a student club can take on, you know, meeting every other Tuesday night for an hour. Um, we had, fortunately, this opportunity at Clemson through these team-based courses, the Creative Inquiries, which you'll hear a little bit more about later, that were the perfect vehicle for this. So we started with 12 students, eight of them were on that slide and some others who joined us. And we worked for a full year to get to the point where our university president was willing to write a letter on our behalf to all the presidents of the Tiger Schools in the country, 56 or 57 of the Tiger Schools. He said he supported our effort immensely, but he wasn't going to put his name on a letter unless he knew it was for real. And we tried before and, you know, things had sort of dissipated and fallen apart. This time, it's for real. And, <laughs> and so a year ago, last May, all of you students, your presidents and, and deans and so on got letters from our president and then we followed up in August and September with emails and letters to clubs and advisors, everyone we could stalk on the internet at every one of your campuses. And here we are after two years of work, four semesters, 13 students I think all together, um, with <clears throat> what is a first in conservation, that is a purely student you know, a student-led initiative in uh, conservation of a major organism, the, the tiger. And this is special. There's nothing like it. There are lots of tiger conservation organizations. They do wonderful things. No one's asked students directly, what can you do? How can you be involved? And we think the students are, could be a powerful force. So I like to joke with people that I could spend, as a faculty member, I could spend a couple hours and craft a very well-written letter and send it to my congressman. In the same amount of time, you guys could make a YouTube video that goes viral. Right? I mean, you have this special power, and you have this enthusiasm and the innocence that Sean talked about, and I just think it's magical. <clears throat> so I want to just say a few things about this. We've been taking students to India for nine years now. We've always seen tigers. Not these, but the previous pictures you've seen were all shot by us on our trips. Those are tigers in the wild. Um, I do want to tell you that that film about India is that seems absolutely true to everything I've ever seen of India, and Anjana says it's true. India has the best tiger parks, the best protection for tigers, the most tigers of any tiger range country. And in the time we've been going there, Sariska and then Pana, is that right? Both lost their tigers, completely gone. The last one poached out. Ranthambore, one of the most celebrated national parks in India, world famous, had 46 tigers. When we went there, there were 24. And a local told us, well, that's what the government says. We think they're 12. How long does it take to kill 12 tigers if you want to kill them? You know, a week, something. The, these populations, it's hard to imagine how fragmented and how small they are. Many of these tiger parks, 15, 20, 32 tigers. And that's all tigers, that's cubs. That's sub-adults, that's not just breeding tigers. They're tiny, they're fragile. And they're magnificent. Tigers can breed like crazy if they're protected. And so there's this, there's this terrible risk that faces them. Uh, but there's a great opportunity. They can double quickly. So I want to start with a few questions for you to contemplate. And this is my prof professorial mode here. First, what is, what is the proper relationship of people with animals? And this, this could influence what you decide tomorrow and how you want to act. Are we, you know, lord and master of animals? Are they, you know, our dominions? We can just use them for our purposes, as in, you know, a pit of, you know um, illustrated by the Tarzan films, or in this um, Indian 
picture, are we sort of one with animals? Are we all part of this mosaic, this fabric of life? Because the way you treat animals, if this is what you believe, is very different than if this is what you believe. <clears throat> what about with tigers? You know, I, I love this shot. Human, tiger looking at each other. You don't really know how this is going to work out. They're two worlds, two animals, alien worlds to each of them. And the question is, you know, what do we, how, what do we make of that animal? What does it make of us? What's our relationship? What's our obligation? Is it just something that we can use or, or dispose of? Or is it part of the fabric of life that we have to protect? Is it just a threat that has to be killed whenever it appears? Like many predators, like wolves and bears. Is it a pet to be kept on a leash and shown to your friends and neighbors to show what a, uh, a fancy person you are? Or is it something else? Is it just another animal um, part of God's creation, if you're religious, part of, you know, one of our cousins for an evolutionist that just deserves to live its life in dignity. And this, this affects how we think of the, how animals are kept in the U.S., you know? Um, and this is an issue that's going to come up. Is it a pet? Should it be a pet? Or is it an animal that should be treated with dignity and respect and maybe kept free of us a little bit? You could probably sense my, <clears throat> my feelings on this. And if you own a tiger, and a lot of people say, oh, I love tigers, I want to have a tiger. I hear that all the time at Clemson. Or we should have a tiger for the football team. We could take them out and, you know, in front of 90,000 screaming fans. And I, think of the, and I hear that and I think, tigers are solitary. This has got to be absolutely terrifying to a tiger. It may not show it in a way that we could see, but it's got to be terrifying. And I just learned of another school that used to have a tiger at football games um, and does it now. I think that's a good thing. But the question you have to ask, if you own a tiger, is that for the animal's sake or is it for your own? Why do you own that tiger? <clears throat> and I think that's an important question. This to me, you know, usually with tiger photos you see, ah, and either they're snarling or they're yawning, but it makes a good photo because they've got these monstrous canines. But a lot of times this is what we see in India. They're regal. They're majestic, they're serene, they're beautiful, they're sort of solitary. They don't need us, you know, and to validate them. They're not terrifying, they're not terrible, they're just magnificent, beautiful animals, and they're wild. And this is sort of why we like them as our mascot. Um, and then the final question, and this is a good one. What will you say when your children ask you, what did you do in college? Well, you say, well, I joined a fraternity, I, partied too much as a freshman, I took some really hard courses, I, I found some guts, I made these friends. But you guys can say, I took a chance. I started a national organization, the first of its kind, to save tigers. And that's what you guys are doing here, and I couldn't be more proud of our students and of all of you. I know it's been a long trip for a lot of you, it's been expensive, uh, you've you're got exams waiting for you when you get back. It's a big unknown coming here, you know, who is this Clemson school that's promising to do things. But really, <clears throat> my feeling is this, we will have succeeded completely if, when we're done with this weekend, we can let go. And this national organization, you guys, and the representatives from these other schools, will get to know each other, you'll start to work together, and you will talk to each other. And you'll make your own rules, and you'll set your own priorities, and this will take on a life of its own, and it will, you know, it's like a butterfly. We're going to let it fly and be free. And, and that's my goal. And so we have to thank a lot of people here on this, uh, on campus. These names won't mean anything to you, but we've had enormous support. And we're going to post this on the internet from all kinds of people on campus. We've had financial support from the student government and from Creative Inquiry. And I want to especially thank a few individuals First, many years of Tigers for Tigers students. Takako is here. She was the first president a couple years ago. And she, she wins the award. She traveled from Japan to be here. So wherever you are from Nebraska, sorry. <laughs> you know, uh, it's good, but you know, um, many years of, of students. Um, 
including current students, lots of current students. President Barker, um, 10 years ago or more, we went, uh, probably 11 years ago, 12 years ago, we went with students to President Barker's office and presented this idea of Tigers for Tigers. Not a conference, but just the idea of this, con this student organization. He said, this is fantastic. I want Clemson students in Asia seeing Tigers in the Wild this summer. It was like March. Asia is a big place, you know, where, do you, where exactly do you go? It took us a couple years to find where to go, and you'll hear more about that later. But he's been an ardent supporter throughout. I have to thank him. And finally, I have to thank Dr. Barbara Spezial, who ha whose support has really made this possible. Without the continuous support and the structure of having these special courses so we can force the students to show up every week, so they can find time in the schedule, so we can work together over an extended period of time, this wouldn't have happened. So anyway, I just want to thank Barbara especially, and she's going to come up and, and say a few words in a second. Um, I think that's all. So thank you all for coming. and. and Thank you. 